Well, I know that there were a lot of people, a lot of horses perished during Katrina um, in the Gulf Coast, um, Mississippi area, because people kept the horses in the stable, kept them in the barn, we and the flooding, uh, the, the flooding was a factor in a lot of deaths. We don't have that. Yeah, and um, destruction of the barns themselves, you know, building materials falling on the mill, that was another factor in the horse's stable. So during during bad storms, horses really most of the time should be turned out. Um, we keep our gates, we open all the gates. The horses are familiar where the gates are, and they can go where they want to. We do have a very large natural dam in the back that will run but it's not flood conditions. We're really lucky in that respect. And then the terrain here is quite hilly, so do they use those hills as a natural? Well, they all lay down on the hills <laughs> okay. right across from you, and um, the white horse was a donkey. It was not a horse that bobs <laughs> home, but anyway. Oh, so how, do your, how does your feeding schedule or, or what you feed your horses change from season to season? Today, it probably really doesn't, except that when we have a local grass called guinea grass, or when there is plenty of grass, we, um, we don't supplement. And we feed pelletized feed, um, Purina horse chow or something similar to that when that is not available, and sweet feed. Um, when it, we're in a period of dry, during the dry season or the drought, or we're doing some pasture conservation, we will feed alfalfa cubes. And the reason why we feed alfalfa cubes is the expense of hay, and you lose so much of the hay. And it's nutritionally, it's really good, and the horses thrive on it. And how do you, how do you feed them, the um, cubes? We put them in buckets and water them down and give them to the horses. We also feed, we supplement that with sweet feed and pellets, too. And I like the Purina horse chow because it's a complete feed and we don't have to worry about the amount of fiber the horse is taking in. That makes a lot of sense um, to, to, to balance their feed ration that way. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about how is the, how do you get the feed here? You don't have a feed mill on the island, All do you? All of our feed is brought in. It's very expensive. Um, I $20 for a bag of sweet feed, 50-pound bag of sweet feed, $19 for a 50-pound bag of horse of, of alfalfa cubes, um, a 45-pound bale, no, 65-pound bale of hay. The last time I bought it, I think, was about $28. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I so, thought I had it expensive yeah. where in Florida where I live. Oh, my goodness. Now, our Department of Agriculture does sell the big round bales, and we do feed that probably more just to occupy our horses because when they aren't grazing, they get into trouble. We have a, a herd of 12 to 14 horses, and they like to play, and the more time they have to play, the less eating time they less time they spend eating, the more time they have to play and get hurt. Um, I We used to get it on a regular basis, but because we had three rainy years, the drought, the the feed we were getting from agriculture was full of too much uh, debris, um, bush, and uh, we stopped and mold that we stopped bringing that in. Wow, let's talk a little bit about um, since you're so remote from where I'm from in the U.S. Um, and you, your your horse population is pretty stable, and you don't have horses coming and going from many, many, many parts of the no. country. Tell me a little, little bit about your yearly vaccinations that you give, and, and how often, and what do you vaccinate for? It's changed just recently because of West Nile. Um, they thought they had found West Nile in Puerto Rico, so everybody in the Virgin Islands, West Nile is carried by birds. So everybody in the Virgin Islands was expecting it to hit here, and they started vaccinating for that. We vaccinate, do the three-way vaccination, and <laughs> at this pasture, we give a tetanus shot 
September the 1st, the beginning of hurricane season. So every year your every horses year, get a tetanus, and, and that's if good. if they have an injury in between, they'll have a booster. Okay. So just recently, Western... Um, uh, West, Nile. West Nile, okay. So Eastern Western encephalitis has all, has always been. It hasn't been here, but because it comes in that three-way vaccination okay. that our vet uses, that that's what we we do influenza. Um, I know. Influenza. What is it? Um, Usually flu and rhino can sometimes uh, come in a one. Yeah, yeah flu and yeah. rhino and and tetanus. Tetanus. Yeah. And we have no. Um, which I believe is becoming an issue in the states now. Um, what is it the dogs get? Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Lost. Or, uh, you know what a dog? Rabies. Rabies. Okay, rabies. that was it. I, that was on my my my, my yeah, list, no and I didn't. Rabies on the island. It doesn't mean that we aren't going to have it. Um, our big, really big health problem are ticks. And um, paraplasmosis, anaplasmosis, which more people in the states are just becoming very conscious of. Our horses, probably the ones born here, are immune to it because they've been exposed through their mother um, because ticks are a problem. And um, the thoroughbreds that come down will sometimes get very sick with fever. So pyroplasmosis, I remember as a kid in Virginia learning about different horse diseases. I remember that being one that we we studied and we learned about, but they were saying at the time that it used to be in the in the U.S., in the continental U.S., but it was no longer a problem. So you're telling me it's making a comeback. It's making a comeback. Um, and the, it's become very much of a concern with the World Equestrian Games being in Kentucky. Um, Texas, they've just found three to four. 400 cases of it, something like that, and they're finding some in Florida. They have some in Florida. So all the states and the USDA have become very, we used to be able to ship our horses to the states. Now it's, I haven't heard of any horses being shipped to the states. Well, I know you used to ship them to the states because I have one. <laughs> one of my, one of my geriatrics, my 22 year old is um, one that was actually belonged to you and to Eileen. And um, yeah, he, he made it to the states in fine in fine form <laughs> after his tra his uh, plane ride. Yes. Um, so he that was bred in the states. He was bred in the states. And he came to us from the states um, through Puerto Rico, through the Virgin Islands, which there isn't much more you can do. We race with that with drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have drug testing. It's wide open. So a lot of horses. And this is a future for some racehorses that come from the states. They do come he down here and they are able to race, probably. But then when they're finished there, if they don't get purchased by or given to a pony clubber, it's kind of sad because there's nothing else for them. And I actually I own one of that's the one that I own and um, who who raced on the island and I probably worked with a few uh, we had a clinic for the last three days and that's why my voice is kind of husky um, is three days of, of teaching and so I'm probably seeing a few of them that had raced here on the island the as well the thoroughbreds uh, actually that had well, raced. I, I don't think we have well my big the big black horse mm -hmm. um, came from the states but. Now our local bred horses are are, very, are coming in very nicely. Okay, so that's different from the, I was here years ago. It's been over ten years, yes. and that wasn't a, a big uh, industry here at the time, or an industry here at all at the time. So now there are more homebreds are I, being. I, yes, I don't call it an industry, but um, <laughs> there are, and the government is trying to give them special compensation on land taxes if it's being used to breed horses and this type of thing but um, Dusty was bred here, Spicy that you just finished working with, Tigger um, but a lot of our horses come from the track and, and they fight to get their horses because the ones who really love their horses know that they will have a good home the rest a of the A good home here with with uh, you and the and the Our and the young ladies. Is finding the ones that are sound. 